our longest trusted English newspaper since 1898. Now available digitally. Computer, order the Manila Times Digital Edition. Subscribed. Get the Manila Times Digital Edition for less than 2 pesos and 50 centavos per day when you sign up for one year. The Manila Times, new source of choice, trusted since 1898. Welcome. Thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times for Wednesday, April 27, 2022. For today's editorial, UN push to curb veto power a step in the right direction. A new initiative within the United Nations to impose a new condition on the veto power of permanent members of the UN Security Council, the US, Russia, China, the UK, and France has been gaining traction over the past few days. If the proposal is adopted, it will be not only a modest step, but a step in the right direction. The resolution, entitled Standing Mandate for a General Assembly Debate when a Veto is Cast in the Security Council, was introduced by Liechtenstein last week, and by week's end had been endorsed by more than 50 UN members, including the US. While welcoming U.S. support for the measure, some observers found it ironic as the U.S. has been responsible for the overwhelming majority of vetoes of Security Council resolutions, 60 out of 82 in its history. The proposed rule change would not eliminate or otherwise modify the existing veto, as that would require an amendment to the UN Charter, something that a majority of the body's 193 members would likely reject. Rather, it requires that the Security Council member casting the veto provide a formal explanation for its reason for doing so to the General Assembly, which will then have the opportunity to debate the matter. The General Assembly can then pass its own resolution rejecting or approving the veto and taking other action outside the purview of the Security Council if a majority of the General Assembly agrees. Although similar proposals have been made in the past, this latest, which sources inside and outside the UN predict will be overwhelmingly approved by the General Assembly, seems to have been inspired by Russia's using its veto to block Security Council action against its illegal invasion of Ukraine. Although similar proposals have been made in the past, this latest, which sources inside and outside the UN predict will be overwhelmingly approved by the General Assembly, seems to have been inspired by Russia's using its veto to block Security Council action against its illegal invasion of Ukraine. That veto was quickly followed by a General Assembly resolution passed by a vote of 147 to 11, with 35 abstentions, condemning Russia's actions, although the UN has yet to take the next step and impose sanctions on Russia. The Security Council is an anachronism, and its very existence as a sort of star chamber of the world's most powerful nations is contrary to the principles that supposedly serve as the foundation of the UN. The permanent members of the Security Council have on far too many occasions used their veto power to advance their own interests, particularly in those instances where their actions would be condemned by the world community. The U.S., as noted, has been particularly cynical in this fashion, but China and Russia have also exercised their power in this abusive manner. In recent years, for example, Russia has blocked Security Council actions on sending a UN observer mission to Georgia, carrying out chemical weapons investigations in Syria, and the formation of a criminal tribunal on the downing of Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 over Ukraine by Russian-backed rebels. Getting rid of the Security Council entirely would be the best option, but as already noted, that idea is politically unpalatable. But that just may be for now. A few weeks ago, the idea of infringing on the permanent veto in any fashion was almost unthinkable. None of the few previous attempts to alter the permanent veto made any progress at all, but now this latest is poised to pass the General Assembly. 
What the resolution achieves in a practical sense is that it puts pressure on those countries that fancy themselves the arbiters of world affairs, the US, Russia, and China, to justify how pursuing their own interests serves the interests of the entire world represented by the UN. In being implemented, it will help to better expose and possibly curb some of their excesses. In addition, its implementation may encourage the UN to seek to reign in the Security Council even more, perhaps by giving the General Assembly real override power on Security Council vetoes, abolishing the permanent veto entirely, or even disbanding the Security Council and returning its powers to the General Assembly. Any of that, of course, is still probably a long way off, but the latest resolution is a step in the right direction. We can only hope that it will lead to others. And that's the editorial for Wednesday, April 27, 2022. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print. Subscribe to its digital edition or log on to www.manilatimes.net Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And listen to the Voice of the Times.